Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. A high quality left-handed joystick with a fully customizable base. Coming up, today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. Before we get started in today's video, I just have one disclaimer. Verbal did send me these products for review. However, that will not influence what I'm about to show you in today's video and all of the links for these products will be down below in the description. In today's video, we'll be reviewing the Verpal left-handed Constellation joystick, the Warbird D base, and the mount for the base. Now, if you haven't seen the intro video to this product series, I'll post links for it down below in the description. That'll explain the reason why I'm doing this in the first place. We will first go through a quick unboxing of the product, and then we will get a brief overview of all of the hardware. We'll then jump over to the developer's website, go over any pricing, and go over any other variations of the product that they have available. We'll then take a deeper dive into the Warbird D base as it is completely customizable. So I'll walk you through the steps of replacing the cams and the springs to set this up for your liking. We'll then head over to the cockpit, mount everything, connect it to our PC, download the Verpal software, do any firmware updates on the product, and then we will spawn into Microsoft Flight Sim and do a demo on the product. I would like to give Greg at Verpal a big thank you for sending the products for review. And with that said, if you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. All right, let's jump into a quick unboxing for the product. We'll start with the Constellation Alpha joystick first. Now let's move into the Warbird D base. And for the mounting kit that I have here, well, I've already put that together, so let me get that for you. And there we are. All right, so let's take a closer look at the Constellation joystick first, and then we'll move on to the mount. The Constellation joystick that I have here today is the plastic version. This also comes in a full metal version as well. Let's take a look at some of the buttons that we have on the head of the unit. Let me get close up on these buttons here so you can, hopefully you'll be able to hear them. If we go down just to the right of the scroll wheel, we also have another hat switch. Let's flip this bad boy on its side. This seems like it's just an up and down switch, and you can also press in on that as well. The trigger on this is a dual stage trigger. So if we press in on this, you'll hear it. That's the first stage. That's the second stage. We can set this up for mapping as well. This can be used to pull down, and then you can press on the trigger with that safety guard. Below this, we have another trigger, and I believe this is actually gonna be on an axis, a fully adjustable hand rest on this side of the joystick. You might think we're done, but we have another button to go over, and that is at the base of the joystick right here. On the bottom of the joystick, our connector, and this does pull out just slightly so that we can get it connected. All of the parts down here are made of metal that you're gonna be connecting to your base. On the head of the stick, this is an RGB ring, which hopefully I'll be able to show you that once we get it connected. Now let's get the weight on this joystick and throw it on a scale. All right, there you have it, 473 grams. For those that are curious of just how fat the handle is on this, let me get a measurement on that for you as well. And there you go, 46 millimeters 
from front to back on the stick. Because the stick has a side protrusion here, of course, that is going to be much wider. So let me just get a measurement on that. All right, so I'm taking a measurement from the fattest part from side to side, and we are just about 63 millimeters. Now let's take a look at the Warbird D base mount for your desktop. While I have the scale out, let's get it on the scale so we can see a weight on this beast. And there you have it, 1,615 grams. We are just a little over three millimeters thick on all of this metal. This portion is just a little smaller at a little over two millimeters. This mounting kit is fully adjustable for the Warbird D base. You can unscrew these and move this mount down farther. And they also have an extended mount too, I believe. The way this thing is gonna mount is it's actually gonna mount just like that on the base. We'll get into that here in a moment. The clamping method that they're using is a quick clamp. This is also fully adjustable. So if you have a thick top like I do, you can just screw down this mount and then tighten up your set screw so it doesn't go anywhere. And then when you wanna mount it, you just clip it up and you're good to go. Just to give you an idea on the size of this mount, from front to back, we are just about 11 inches. From top to bottom, we're just over nine inches. Side to side on this mount, at its max width is just about four inches. Now let's get a quick look at the Warbird D base. And just to give you some dimensions on the base, we are just over 87 millimeters wide, 129 millimeters long. If you add the connectors on the front, we are now up to 147 millimeters long. The thickness of the base is just over 61 millimeters, and from where the joystick mounts to the very bottom is 101 millimeters. Now let's throw this on the scale, see what we get here. 893 grams for the Warbird D base. Also included, you get a desk mount option that you can actually mount the base and then it will sit right on top of your desk. We're gonna be mounting everything to our desk mount option. This does come in the box, so if you don't want to purchase the desk mounting option and you want to keep your joystick directly on your desk, it already comes with the hardware needed to do that. Also in the box, we get several sets of cams. Now these cams are what we're going to go over here shortly to help you adjust the feel of this joystick. They also give us some springs here so we can adjust the amount of force that we're going to feel on the joystick. All right, so now let's jump over to the Verpal website. We'll take a look at the price and the other options that they have available. We're on the Verpal website and we are on the grips page. And as you can see here, the Verpal Constellation Alpha left-handed model is currently on sale for $174.99. And if we scroll down a little bit more, we'll give us all the details of the stick as well as all of the buttons that come on the stick. We scroll back up, go over to compatibility, this will list all of the bases that this stick is compatible with. And one more over to support. This will give us any user documentation for the stick itself. All right, now let's hop over to the Warbird D base page. At the current time, the price for the Warbird D base is $218.95. This will give us some information about the Warbird D base. And if we scroll down a little bit farther, these are the included cams that come with the unit. Each of these cams are gonna have their own force curve associated with them. Scroll back up again, over on more details, this will list everything that is gonna come with the Warbird D base. And if we head over to support, this is where the documentation is located for the user manual, as well as the Verpal configuration software. What you would wanna do is click on the Verpal software. Under the user documentation tab, this will give us all the information we need to know about the unit itself, how to install the mounting kit so you can have the joystick on your desk. We also have information on all the cam kits that come with it and the force curves that are applied to each cam. Each spring is color-coded, so you can't mess that up. And if we scroll down a little bit more, 
you will see the operation of the cams. Now's the time we're going to disassemble the Warbird D base so I can give you a closer look at all of the internals and the quality of craftsmanship. We'll also go over how to replace the cams and the springs. We will compare the amount of force that is on the various cams and springs. So with that said, let's get to it. Now the first thing that we need to do to start disassembling this is we need to remove the USB cover on the front here. All right, now when you remove this USB port, you need to be very careful that you pull this off straight so you don't damage the pins that are on the back side. And there we go. This is what the back side of the USB port looks like. So these are the pins that you don't want to damage. We'll set that aside along with all the screws. Now all we need to do is remove the four corner screws that are going to hold the cover on the side of the base. Now we just lift straight up. As you can see, everything here, CNC milled aluminum. And the fit and finish is quite astonishing. The cams that we're going to be swapping out, you have a set of cams here and you have a set of cams here that are going to control forward and backwards. Riding on these cams, we have bearings, and then on the internals of all of the other pivot points are all bearinged as well. It looks like we have a hall sensor for the side and on the front, and this is going to detect the position of the joystick itself. You want to be very careful that you don't damage these boards when you have this apart and you don't want to drop it in this state. I want to swap out the cams that I have in here for the factory cams that come with the unit. And then we will measure the force on the stick in the pitch axis front and back. Keep in mind that there are other springs that come with this. So what we'll do is I want to test two different springs. We'll test the heaviest spring and we'll test the spring that comes with the unit. It looks like the nuts that hold the cams on are eight millimeters, as well as the other head of the nut are eight millimeter as well. Before you start loosening up these nuts like I just did, is you wanna take off the spring. Now these springs can be a little tricky to get off. There we go. So the trick that I see is you need to make sure that you hold the cam in one position up against this bearing, and then you can get in there with some needle nose and pop it off. Now, one quick tip of when you're taking this apart, once you take these nuts off, the bolt can be pushed through to the other side. The spacers that are on here have a chamfer on one side and is flat on the other. What you can do is just take a picture of it with your phone, so this way if you have a mishap, you can refer back to that. At this point, what I can do is just pull off each of these cams. Now these cams are on here very, very snug, so you almost have to work this back and forth to get it off. But you can see how easy this bolt just wants to fall out of that hole now. So you gotta be very careful. I'm just gonna put a nut on there so it doesn't fall out on me. I'll try to wiggle this one off. Come on. There we go. The way to know what cams that you have in your unit, on the end of the cam, there are these two little notches here. Those notches will correspond to the chart that is on the Verpal website in that documentation page. You want to make sure that you put on the exact same cams on the single axis. You can have two different sets on your pitch and roll axis. These are the Avia Cam Soft Center. We'll go ahead and throw one of these on. And we'll throw on the other one. There we go. All right, now we have both of our nuts on. Let's go ahead and give those a tighten up. Now we're just gonna tighten these up until they're snug 
and then we'll give them a quarter turn. The lock nuts that are on here should keep everything from loosening up. We're going to be testing out the heavy springs as well as the default regular springs that they offer in the kit. Ooh, these are... These are pretty heavy. Again, I wanna put pressure on the upper cams to hold it in place. And then, oh boy, oh, that's tight. So this heavy spring is very heavy. And I'm gonna try a different way. I'm gonna take a trick out of the old automotive handbook, installing drum brake springs. I'm going to use a screwdriver place over top of the screw here and try to gracefully slide it down right over top there. Now getting that back off is gonna be another challenge, but that's an easy way to get it on. Now let's get a force reading on the heavy springs with the Avia soft center cams. So I'll throw this back in the base I'm not going to screw it on. When you go to plug in your joystick, on the bottom of the connector, there's a little arrow here, and on the base itself, there's another arrow there. So you wanna line up those arrows and push it down. It's kinda of, kind of fiddly to get it on there, but it'll work. All right, so as you can see, we are at zero pressure. Now I'm gonna pull it all the way back. So we have a, just about nine pounds, almost 10 pounds of force on this pulling back. All right, so there you go. You've got about 10 pounds of force using the heavy springs with the Avia Soft Center cams. Now we will take off the heavy springs and replace those with the regular springs and see the difference in the amount of force. <laughs> Woo. Wow. If you're going to put the heavy springs in, it is not going to be an easy task to swap those out if you want to go back to your regular springs. And now let's go ahead and pop back on the regular spring. I'll install it the same way. There we go. Let's pop this in our base and get a force reading with that one. All right, as you can see, we're at zero. So we'll go ahead and pull it all the way back. And that's all the way back. Just over three pounds of force on the regular springs. Now what I'm gonna do is we'll remove the spring, remove the cams, and I'm gonna put in the Cosmo no center cams. Let's go ahead and install the heavy spring again. This is probably the easiest way of installing these springs, but getting them off, there we go, is not so easy. <laughs> All right, so let's pop it back on, put our handle back on. There we are, got us zeroed out, here we go. There we are, just about five pounds. That shows you right there that changing out the cams using the same spring will give you a completely different force profile on that joystick. Now let's throw in the regular springs and I'll show you what the force profile is like for that. We're zeroed out, let's see what we get here. one point eight pounds and it did bump up to two pounds the other thing that we can adjust on this is we also have dampers inside of the unit you'll notice on the very front we have a hole here with a graduation on it and we also have one right here might be hard to see 
What those are going to do is those are going to adjust the dampening effect that we have on the stick. Now I didn't tighten up the dampers all the way. I just tightened them up a little bit. Let me show you what it does now. There we go. Now the other thing that I forgot to mention when we went over the stick earlier is that it also has a rotation axis. To get that to function, on the back of the stick, there is a hole right here, and you're just gonna loosen up the set screw that's in there. Now we have an axis that we can move left and right on the joystick. So this may be good if you don't have rudder pedals, this would be a way to control your rudder. All right, so now let's get this thing back together, and then we're gonna measure the deflection of the joystick itself. Now for the tricky part. When we replace this front USB jack, you want to make sure that all of these pins are going to line up with the mating surface on the inside. And one little trick here is you don't want to tighten up any of the screws just yet. Just put all of them in first, get them all started. Once you have all of the screws in, then you can go back across them and tighten them up. This is going to be pretty hard for me to get being on that side of the table. Because I don't know where center is, what I'm going to do is measure the total deflection and then divide it by two, and that will give you your degrees in, both, in either direction. So, we'll start here. Zero. There we go. And now I'm going to go all the way back. There we go. I hope you can see that. We have 40, just about 45 degrees, 44.8. So that will give you 22 degrees forward and 22 degrees backwards in motion. Before we jump over to the cockpit to get everything set up there, let's mount the joystick to the mounting bracket. This way it'll be a little bit easier for me to show you how that's done right here. The first thing that we need to do is to remove these front mounting screws. Next, we need to loosen the other mounting screws that are just behind the front ones. You don't want to remove these, you just want to loosen them up enough so that you can get this two millimeter bracket underneath of those screws. So let's show you what that's going to look like. Just like that. Now that we have those in, we can insert the front screws. Before you tighten anything up completely, you want to put some pressure on this forward to make sure it's all the way on. And then we're going to tighten up all of the screws. So let's move over to the cockpit. We will then mount everything, connect everything to the PC, and then we will open the Verpal software and see if there's any firmware updates that we need to for the device. So I just found out a great piece of information and that is the maximum thickness for the Verpal bracket. And I think I've just about maxed it out. I can't go any more. So if you have any thicker of a desk than this, you will not be able to mount this. You'll probably have to make some sort of adjustment there, but let me show you how thick my desk is so you have an idea. 34 millimeters. So if you are any thicker than 34 or 33 millimeters, you are not going to be able to get the verbal bracket on to your desk. There we go. All right, so now I just got to connect this into the back of the unit and then I'll plug it into my PC. All right, good. As you can see on the screen, we have our Verpal joystick here loaded. Perfect. In the axes portion of this, it looks like we have some adjustment here that we could add to the joystick itself. So we have some dead zones, center and end zones that we can set. I'm gonna leave all of these stock. All right, so now let's head down to the profile portion. As you can see here, it's already showing that we have a left-handed stick. We'll go down the firmware and we'll click on Start Auto Firmware Update. Okay.
All right, looks like everything is good to go. The last thing that we can do in the axis page is we can calibrate all of the axes. So for this, you want to make sure that any of your dampers are completely loosened up. So this way you have free movement and it's going to return back to center for you. We're going to hit calibrate axes. And then we're going to run the stick through all of the axes. And you're going to do that several times. Also keep in mind, if you're going to use the twist axes, make sure you calibrate that as well. Then we're going to make sure that we get the stick as centered as possible. And there we are. Everything is calibrated for us now. There's one more thing that I want to show you on this application. At the top right, we have a pro button. If we hit that, now we have a bunch of new things that are going to populate here. So we can adjust the LED. We can adjust different button profiles. There is a bunch of stuff that you can do within the application itself. But for today, I'm not going to get into any of that because it says that it's plug and play. So we shouldn't need to set up any of that stuff. The last thing that I want to do for calibration is we're going to calibrate this in Windows as well. So to do that, we're going to go down to the search bar and I'm going to go to control panel. We're going to head up to hardware and sounds, devices and printers, and this should bring up all the devices that are on our system. You just want to find the Warbird D base. We're going to right click on it and then click on game controller settings. Once we have that up, we're just going to scroll down until we find the Warbird base. Click on it and then click on properties. Once you're here, we're going to go over to the settings tab at the top and then we're gonna hit calibrate. That will then populate the calibration wizard. We'll hit next. And at this point, we need to run through all the extent range of the joystick axes. Forward and backward, left and right, and then circle pattern. Make sure you hit all of the bump stops. Hit next, next again. The Z axis is going to be the twist motion, so we're not going to set that up. The X axis will actually be on the far right. This will be just like a joystick on an Xbox controller. So what we need to do is run through the joystick or the axis range. X is going to be left and right. Then we'll hit next. Y is going to be up and down. And then we'll hit next again. The slider is going to be this little handle right on the front lower portion of the joystick. You want to run through that several times. Once you're done, we can hit next, finish, apply, and everything is now set up. Now what we're going to do is fire up the simulator and see this thing in action. I'll bring you guys right back. Okay, we are now in the MD500. Let's go ahead and set up some controls for the device. We'll hit escape, go to controls. You're then gonna find the Verpal device at the very top. For today, I'm only setting up the cyclic for the helicopter. So here are the axes we're gonna use. Now that we have everything bound properly to the cyclic, we can go ahead and get some power going here. This is not a tutorial on how to fly a helicopter. Let's get this thing started up. Okay, let's see how good I can fly a helicopter. <laughs> now keep in mind, I haven't flown a helicopter in forever. Now I will say my first impressions using this 
as a helicopter joystick is really, really smooth. Now for this demonstration, I'm also using the uh, collective that I just did a review on the other day. If you missed that review, take a look down in the description or you can click up at the top right of the screen. Okay, so that is the review of the Verpal Constellation left-handed joystick with the Warbird D base. As you can see, it works flawlessly here in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I haven't gotten a chance to try it in 2024 yet, but that'll be coming. As far as my final conclusion on the product, I feel for the price, this thing is a beast. It'll withstand pretty much anything you want to throw at it. You can adjust this to your heart's content. You can set it up for various aircraft or helicopters. I think it is a great all-around product, especially if you have a simulator cockpit like I do, and you need to give yourself more modularity in your cockpit, but want a more quality product versus something like this that you could pick up for, what, $100 or so? With that, folks, we're going to wrap up today's video. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section, and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button to all of my flight simmer friends around the world. Keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.